today you'll be giving out um, you know some helpful tips especially if you're if you're new planning to surf fish and the definition surf fishing comes down to basically right here from the surf fishing from the surf you know there's different methods that you could do so whether it's you know having your your rod holders out like this or you know um, uh, if you're planning on just uh, seeing what you catch uh, you could just have a low carolina rig with the small with the small little weight uh, probably like a three quarter ounce some people use half ounce um, but for the surf i typically use a one ounce that'll keep your bait out there uh, a bit longer without the waves moving it too much around in the in the current and all that and and also when using that method it's best you know to to just cast out strain the surf with like a with a flexible not flexible pole but like a, a convenient pole where it's not so heavy just something something light but I mean with the weight it needs to catch the fish you're going for and, and using that method you know you could pretty much you know not be in one spot like this but you could go up and down the beach finding different structures different drop-offs different anything you're looking for out there on the beach you know to target the species you're going after a lot of people use that for going for perch going for halibut um, I've done it myself even going for croaker you know having the small little Carolina rig and um, and the ghost shrimp or or some mussel at the end and and you know that you can even catch croaker in that method um, a lot of people use that that method as well for Corvina going for Corvina and also on on light line they like a lot of people like using a light line going for Corbina because it puts up a great fight. But yeah, when surf fishing, you know, like this this part right here, I'm just waiting for the tide to go down to access the reefs a little more. Uh, but right now, I have them cast it out. I have um, one of these weights on there. I have one of these weights, torpedo weight. And these weights, you know, they're very convenient. That way, they're not getting stuck out there on the reefs and everything. And, and these weights right here, you know, this is a three ounce, for example. Uh, but on both of these I have a four ounce you could go anywhere from up to depending on the current you know but up to one ounce two ounce all the way up to six seven eight ounces all depending on the current the area you're fishing uh, species you're targeting you know if you really need to have your bait in one spot and um, and yeah depending on all those factors that's something you have to you know take notes on you know if you need to switch out the weight as you're fishing you know go ahead bring extras um, but all that will be helpful for you on the long run yeah, these fishing rod holders, you know, there's uh, many types. If you're just planning on, oops, yeah, if you're just planning on being in one spot, there's many types. There's many types of fishing rod holders you, you can have. You know, like this one, for example, right here. This one that I purchased, you know, it could go anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks. Uh, this one right here, here, I'll show you a little close up real quick. No, so this one right here, for example, it's a marathon. It's, the same thing you know PVC PVC with a uh, with aluminum with aluminum spike to go into the dirt this one right here I made it myself you know it's a two inch PVC pipe roughly about 18 24 inches down to the aluminum spike uh, this is more time consuming you know because you're making it yourself some people could also could also get a two inch or one and a half inch a PVC pipe and they make a, a spike down here at the bottom that way you could just dig that into the dirt roughly three feet is all you need and, and yeah some people use that method so all depending you yeah, all depending what you're what you're looking for what you're wanting to use what's more convenient for you and yeah like I said you know you may not even need that you may not even need that um, due to due to the type of fishing you're doing um, so yeah, you know, and also uh, best time to catch fish you know, is during slack tides during the transition from one tide to the next or you know high tide to low tide low tide to high tide um, any type of uh, uh, any type of slack tide change that's usually when when the when you'll get better look at fish you know uh, yeah you gotta time it right and like I said you know all depending all depending on the fish you're targeting um, you know, for halibut, for example, from the surf, you know, a lot of people mainly use uh, uh, lucky crafts, you know, the artificial baits, similar to these.
I mean, I have these as well, but I'm not going for halibut today. You know, they typically use like stuff like this. Going for halibut. You can even catch perch on these and other fish, you know, depending on their hunger as well. <laughs> you know, because it's random sometimes when fishing. Like, you'll be going for one species and sometimes you'll hook up on another one, you know, which is an exciting moment. Um, so, yeah, you know, just be aware as well when you're fishing out there. And also for sandy beaches, you know, sandy beaches, um, you know, when it's a nice sandy area, these are the weights recommended for surf fishing, anchor weights. This is how these look like, because these dig into the sand. These dig into the sand, and you can just have your bait out there. You can have your, you can have your lines out there. Oh, I don't see the other one now. There it is. But yeah, you can have this weight on there, for example. You have your lines out there and you don't have to worry about it shifting so much and like I said all depending on the current could be anywhere up to recommended four ounce up to eight ounce you know this right here for example is a six ounce I'm not using that here you know because it's a it's a reefy spot out there so you know not recommended you'll get stuck right away yeah, and also you know it is morning you know I got I got here roughly like a like at 8 a.m. or so you know but cold wind in the morning so I have my waders all depending you know if it's like it's like the evening times where the sun's hotter and everything then yeah you know I'll, I'll, I'll go out there you know probably just my my shorts you know my bare feet and I'll be casting out there but also you know when going out to these reefy spots I like using the waders because I don't have to worry about anything poking me I have my 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 boots on these waders are all attached you know with the boots you know, so that's very convenient. And that way, I'm getting some bites on there, but, but yeah, that way you don't have to worry about, you know, getting um, getting poked with anything, anything coming at you, you know. Either way, it's, it's rare that would happen, you know, but I'm not saying it won't happen. You no, know, it's always a possibility out here on these waters, always something unexpected. Okay, let's check on this line real quick. Huh? How many snags so far? Uh, none yet. Oh, dude, I was fishing yesterday with, and uh, I had a high-low rig with some old cut-up grunion. Yeah. And I get, the, and all of a sudden you go in a hole. There's just so much rock out there. Oh, I know. And then I lose it. There's a sinker. There's a sinker. There's a sinker. I was like, after the fourth time, I switched to just lucky crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even sometimes when you try to bring it in fast, sometimes it'll. Yeah, they're getting a hole. Yeah, 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 bro. But it, I, they were. I was getting so many bites out there. Okay, so also you know keep in mind of your your gear setup that that you'll be using out here. You know, this right here, for example, has a capacity of up to 65 pound braid. On this one, for example, I only have 50 pound braid. You know, 50 pound braid. It's the PG5000. And it's a 10 foot rod. This other one, for example, is my more convenient rod. You know, it's, I think, uh, what is it, 7 foot? Yeah, 7 foot. 7 foot pole. Capacity up to 40 pound braid. That's what it has right here. 40 pound braid, 40 pound braid, 40 pound leader line. This one I already got it with the with the ghost shrimp. Still the claw on there, you know. It attracts some fish sometimes. You know, sometimes they're going for the for the the species. You know, with like uh, like lobster, low crab. So I keep this on there, you know, just just for decoration. <laughs> and yeah, right here got my got my sinker. That's a four ounce for them to repeat away yeah so we'll be testing these out there and yeah you know always 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 as well you know be aware be aware of surfers you know beach goers you know find a spot where we have a good distance we have a good distance from everyone that we have no problems out here
got crossed. Yeah, it's a nice one. Nice bass, yeah? Yeah. Just got tangled up with my other line. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's a keeper, yeah? Oh, yeah, a keeper one. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. Nice one. See, another helpful tip on the surf. Don't have your your lines too close together yeah the reason i had it like this right now is because some surfers started coming on this side didn't want to cast out into them but yeah i landed this nice calico bass but yeah i ended up tingling my line i had to you know and to not cut the other one i just cut the the swivel part of this part yeah all i have to do is just tie it back together but got this nice beauty out there it's a little sandy but nice one